Hey, what's up guys? I'm here with my good buddy Chris Hulsbeck. One of the very few people now to pronounce the name right. And he lives here in Bisbee, Arizona. I came here the first time two years ago, right? Yep. He's a very much respected composer as well. Writes music for games. And we're here in Bisbee. Lowell is Lowell. Uh, okay. part of Bisbee here. An old uh, street that just escaped the mine. Yeah. And it was basically stuck in the 50s. Yeah, with all the buildings and there's like classic cars here and things like that. An old gas station. Very cool. So the movies, they always had those cables. Yeah, yeah. Industry, ding, 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 ding. You know, and then the service personnel knew somebody's here. So as Chris mentioned, there are interests renovating the entire area into a livable museum. Most of the town of Lowell was actually swallowed by the mine, but this street remained. Oh, I love this one. I love the color. Hello, by the way. And here we keep going down the street. The nicest car has just left us. Question All those gunshot wounds. Yes. Uh. <laughs> Here we are in Bisbee. A very nice, cute little town. Which I'm going to explore a little more, but I just want to give you a quick overview. Chris and I, we are in downtown Bisbee. Let's walk up the main street. And if Chris any information to share, he wants to share, uh, we share with you. There was a movie made in 1955 called Violent Saturday, and it actually uh, used Bisbee as a backdrop and this bank was part of the, of the movie plot. The, the whole architecture in Bisbee is very interesting and uh, studied by, by architectural students from all over the world because there's so many different styles here. Um, every high society mine owner wanted to uh, have a better building than the next one, so they built all this, made this into what it is today. Here's the Bisbee Grand Hotel. Chris just told me they have events in there and stuff. Very nice. Yeah, cool vibe here. It's just with the, you know, old Americana mixed with European elements and all that. Oh, wow. Amazing Bisbee. Look at that. That is nice. That is actually really nice. Do not remove, but copper. Wow, that will look cool. Got to reinforce a little bit, right? Yeah. In the van. It's an alien brain. 
something, I don't know. Tell us of an upstairs. Well, here's a guitar. So yeah, plenty of stuff. <laughs> oh, those are cool shoes. Oh yeah. This oh, guy yeah. looks creepy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that there's an alien. Yeah, we are going, going to, to Roswell. Roswell. There you go. Very soon we're going to be there and I'm probably find a bunch of those type of stores just with alien stuff in it. Yeah. I bet that record player is not old. That, that look just looks old. Oh, like retro look? Yeah, I bet uh, with you this probably has a USB plug. Oh, they're, well, they're, first of all, there's a CD tray. <laughs> oh my god, he's right. That is, uh, <laughs> that is such a fakery. Well, Chris could see that right from there, that it was a fake player with a CD player in it. <laughs> all right, let's check out the coffee. Mall, shopping mall place. Right here. Oh, nice. Look at that. Oh, yes. I remember this place because they had a court guitar and they still have it. Right here. Chord acoustic. Quick look from upstairs. Oh, cool, yeah, so it must have been a shopping mall. Actually, it was a shopping mall, and they have a radio channel here. KBRP 1961. Stop is Queen Mine Tours. So Chris and I are gonna do a tour very soon. Looking forward to that. Here's another view from Bisbee. And oh nice. Here's the fireplace, but this is the store. Hello oh, Chris. So we're going to get helmets and looking forward to that. Battery pack's going to go right here in your pocket. Light's going to go around your neck. Leave your light on and head straight down, okay? There you go. No, it's getting a chilly here. There he is. Hey, yeah. camera. <laughs> Thank you.
No. The reason he called it a soap, we started at the bottom of the ore body and would mine out the bottom, step up, mine out, step up, mine out. How they discovered this ore body right here, if you look right up here, you see where that light is? Right behind you, looking for silver, and they were following a silver vein, matter of fact, and they hit this here. It was called the mother load. At about 35 to 40% pure copper in this area. Now the miners in that day were issued three candles each for a 10 hour shift. Oh wow. They worked two 10 hour shifts. They made a grand total of $3.50 a day. Nice. Doesn't sound like much. What was good then was a penny. You could go to the best steakhouse here in town for about 14 cents. So it was pretty good money compared to other things around here. <clears throat> oh, this is a double jack. The reason we called it a double jack, one guy had to haul this steel, and the other one got to swing the hammer. <laughs> oh. <laughs> You might want to hold it while I swing it. No. You're the same age as us. No. That's the first time I ever had anybody say, yeah. <laughs> well, they got pretty efficient the with it because they knew tomorrow their partner was going to be swinging this thing. So they didn't miss very often. You'll use them handrails. Them handrails. This here is the first drill they went to after the hand drilling. Miners were happy about that. They didn't have to swing out 12 pound hammer no more. This drill does not have water. You fire this thing up in five minutes, this drift would be so dusty you couldn't even see me across here. You got the nickname, the Widowmaker. And they went to this one. It's got a water right there. It goes in right here. And there's a needle that goes all the way down here into that drill steel. These drill steels are hollow. No dust. Very much better. But it weighs 280 pounds. You'd have to drill a pinhole in the back, put a come along on it, wrap it around this, jack it up tight, loosen those two bolts, jack it up to the next hole, tighten the bolts up, let the come along off. <clears throat> Way too inefficient. Then they went to this one here. We called it the Cadillac in 1950. <laughs> Gardner Denver came out with this. It's called a uh, Gardner Denver 63. They still use these in the mines today all over the world. You can put up to 120 pounds of air pressure on this leg. What we do is put our foot on it right here, give it a little bit of air here and pick that up where we wanted it, flip that on, drill your hole. This thing had rotation, air, water. It also had a hammer in it. It hammered as it drilled. You could drill a seven foot hole out with this here in about eight minutes. Wow. So it's pretty fast. And you never want it to stand straddle. <laughs> These legs kick out. They got 120 pounds of air pressure on them. They don't kick back like that. They kick straight up. <laughs> That'll make a believer out of you. Only took one time. <laughs> this is what we used here in Bisbee. You would drill the center hole and four holes around it. You only loaded this center hole. When you blasted this out, it would bring out a ring about like this. Seven foot back, out here, out of the way. And you start shooting these other ones to it. And it just kept making the hole bigger and bigger and bigger. And then you shot the bottom ones last, which is called the lifters. It would pick the muck pile up a little bit and throw it this way, made it easier for us to get it out. Now the way we loaded this, you take one stick of powder, get your powder knife out, put about a two, two to three inch split in the side of it, stick your primer in the end, and run your fuse down alongside of it, you stick it in the hole there, you run it to the back, and you tamp that one in. While you were doing that, your partner would be sitting here splitting powder. He'd give you six more sticks. You run seven sticks to a hole. You tamp in the last one again, real good. When you got them all loaded, this is how we timed it. You take a spitter board. This is a spitter board. You grab this first burn hole right here, this one. You'd run it out about 16 inches. Then you catch your next one, it would be this reliever here. You would run it out 15 and a half inches. You want it about a half inch shorter than that one. Then you go to the next one over here. It'd be 15 inches, be a half inch shorter than that one. 
Then when you got them all on your spitter board, you take another one like this here, shove it down on it tight. Get your fuse knife out again, and you cut them off flush when they're all on there. Now the powder knife here at that time was about a dollar. You get them at the Phelps Dodge store. Wasn't any good for nothing else. So when the miners all quit here or got laid off, they just throw them away. Now if you go on eBay, they're about a hundred bucks. <laughs> because they're relics, you know. Yeah, yeah. You take what they call a spitter. It was made out of magnesium. You lit it, uh, yeah. it burned at 1200 degrees. You could run it across that board that fast, it'd light every fuse on it. Then your partner would go one way to garden, you would go the other. And the blast would sound something like this here. The only thing they hauled on this thing was men, materials, dynamite, drills, mule. Now a mule won't fit inside that cage. They had a big harness to put on that mule and they hang them up underneath the bottom of it. Oh. They tie his feet together and blindfold him. Oh. Send him wherever they wanted to be two miners waiting on him. They'd pull him out on the station, take the harness off, untie his feet, take the blindfold off and get the hell out of the way. That mule didn't like that ride at all. <laughs> <laughs> the company called this a sanitary cart. <laughs> well, we had a lot of different names for it. Than that. <laughs> Never could figure out to this day why they made it too old. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do? You know? <laughs> well, they'd catch a new guy down here with his pants down around his ankle. One kind of keep him busy, the other one kick that wedge out and give her a shove. Just going to the station. <laughs> I was trying to figure out how to stop it. <laughs> no, that's the dump. <laughs> stop. Checking out the museum here in Bisbee. Yeah, and yeah, be open. Shipper. Yep, coming around this way in a second. Oh, that's like one of the lifts, I assume, right? A cage, right? She wheel. for the cable. All right, here's the museum. Half an hour. Can we make it a half an hour? Oh yeah. All right, let's do it. So here is the first 40 years. It's a super nice picture here of well, the church is over there. So it's kind of where we are. The uh, and citizens got our main, three main locations from our building. We've got two locations on this floor, and we have another one on the floor with uh, one, one uh, Yeah, see the street, the main road. Oh, wow, here. Deutsche Kaiser. Serbian ceremonial costume sword. Immigrating to the S. Yep. I can relate. Chris can relate. Immigration yeah. to the America. Americas, yeah. 
Kaiserflagge hier oben. Oh, ja. As Germans came from multiple angles of the world to the Americas. So Chris is actually, he kept a lot of his accent. I just can't, I can't, it just went away. But Chris is more like keeping the, the proficient way of uh, speaking the <laughs> German oh, no. English with a certain amount of pronunciation and uh, capabilities. Right? <laughs> With the hammer. Wow. He has an important part that he mentioned. That a lot of mine workers got sick from uh, all the dust and toxic fumes oh, and um, before it was they also had only candles. This building was owned by the big mining operation. So yeah. This was their um, main offices. Wow. Can you imagine the deals that have been made yes. at this table? <laughs> the money that was counted on this table, the money that was kept in that safe. Yes. How's Hello, it how are you doing? Hello. Is it open? We can walk in here? Yeah, yeah, yeah you can you are can you look doing around. Historical it's research. Wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. Wow. For sure, for sure. Just look around and enjoy. If you have any questions about relatives that might have lived here or anything like that, we might be able to help you out. There's the tags, it's similar to what they did with the guest there. That's like keeping keeping track of who is in the mine who, and who came out. Oh, that's so right. That if somebody uh, gets lost, they would know because the tag oh, would that's be true. returned. Yeah, that makes sense now. And here he is. Why do you use brass tags? There was a gruesome reason. <laughs> for using durable brass tacks in case of an explosion cave and other disaster. <sighs> None of brass would survive. People always look so serious in the pictures because the amount of light you need to take a picture took a while. So if they would move, you would have a blurry effect on their faces. So that's why people never smile in our pictures. At least that's what I found out. Belichtungszeit, what is that in English? Exposure. Exposure time, thank you so much. Yep. That's what I was looking for. Wow, there. I already have a lot of photos of this stuff. Well, they're definitely taking your time. I was like mentioned that to Chris earlier. You know, in the time when this was all active here, I don't believe cities like this were such a tourist attraction. I'm sure it was pretty rough here and, you know, day by day stuff and now years later everybody's coming back and enjoy me included to watch this yeah that, that's what he showed us in the mine 1920 some of the stuff doesn't even look real but it is <laughs> You know, the candles are everywhere. Oh. Would you take a look at this new batch of labor the company has sent down? The Russian Legion must have gone full of loco. Hope we can get some work out when we're to kill themselves. Now, hold on, part. These folks look like my neighbors. I don't want anybody getting hurt. With a little instruction and past training. Oh, the modern mining, look at that. There you go. That's where some of the copper was going. Oh, uh, that's a crane.
including the GameCube and the laptop. <laughs> That's right. All the electrical gear, everything you have needs copper. Here is the um, the mine, yeah, the Lowell. big one. Wow, and that was the cars were right here. Where we found somewhere, the cars somewhere around here. Yeah. yeah. And then this is the dump coming from out of there. And then we drive this way later to Chris Place. And they're still is. processing this with like leached chemicals that go through the dump and they catch it and extract minerals that way. Oh really? Wow. We go away from So this was a stock stock let's say try it again this was a stock exchange stock bar exchange that's chris favorite spot here the courtyard right? this is uh um, this is a cool venue for like events and uh, was the old jail it's a private residence so it looks cool look at that iron door all bag in the corridor that's a nice picture man right here presbyterian church saw the tower Chris's property. He's doing something that I eventually would love to do and is building an off grid home complex, pretty much self supporting out here. Chris? Well, um, yeah. Great to see you again. We haven't seen it in two years. It was so. definitely fun. Uh, yep. Hopefully not as long until the next time. And uh, yes, have thanks. a good trip uh, east words and um, hope to see you again soon yeah thank you so much for having me soon means under two years that would be nice uh, yeah. good luck with the house built thanks okay. hopefully yep. uh, it will be built soon in the description uh, I'm gonna go attack this gentleman uh, yeah good friend by now a fantastic composer all about the sunset left and with that said yep dude see you hopefully sooner than later again until next time at Chris Hulsbeck ladies and gentlemen